Hello friends, welcome to another day of Q&A's, joined by my lovely and helpful wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will be asking me one of your questions from Instagram. Alright, the next question is by Gaspar Cero. Hi Leo, I saw you mentioned that you managed to rid yourself of Crohn's disease in one, in one of your posts. Could you share how you managed to do it and maybe explain a bit of background on Crohn's disease? Thank you Lucy. Uh, this is an important question and even for the people that have never suffered with Crohn's disease or colitis, um, these are known as diseases of Western civilization. Uh, there are a lot of diseases of Western civilization, some are heart disease, diabetes, but these are also some of them. So it's educational. To tell you guys a little bit about it, uh, Crohn's disease uh, is part of a group of diseases called uh, inflammatory bowel diseases. These diseases mostly are composed of two diseases, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is an inflammatory disease that's restricted to the, to the colon, mm -hmm. whereas Crohn's is a much more severe version of it, where it's not just on the colon, but across the intestinal system and could go to the end of the intestinal system, including the rectum. And it's a very, you know, very severe, much more severe than colitis, but very related. Now, bodybuilders, for some reason, know a lot about ulcerative colitis. A lot of bodybuilders seem to have suffered from ulcerative colitis. Many of them have gotten their colons removed, but they tend to be, from what I noticed, less, no, less aware of Crohn's disease, which is the more severe version. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit about this. What I want to talk about is, I'll tell you about the genetics of it a little bit, uh, because we want to know how does it manifest. manifest. Is it genetics or environment? Mm -hmm. Talk about the genetics a bit. I'll talk about the environment a bit. I'll talk about the pathology of the disease a bit. Then I'll talk about uh, how, you, how people get diagnosed and how they get treated. And then I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So to begin, Crohn's disease is a highly uh, genetically determined disease. Twins, if one twin has Crohn's disease, the other twin is 30% uh, or 35% of the 35% uh, of the twins that their twin has Crohn's disease also have Crohn's disease. So 35% is, oh. is, is determined by genetics and maybe may growing up together a little bit, right? Uh, we do know Crohn's disease is one of the most studied diseases in genome-wide association studies. So what genome-wide association studies do is they map people's genes and then they use uh, advanced statistical programs to analyze the correlations between individual polymorphisms at certain genes, they're called single nucleotide polymorphisms, uh, how they correlate to outcomes. Mm -hmm. So they've done this with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis extensively. Mm -hmm. Ulcerative colitis has been linked to 47 SNPs, uh, the single nucleotide polymorphisms. Crohn's disease has been linked to, I think, 71, something like 71 mm -hmm. or 73, something like that. And um, 17 of these polymorphisms are shared between the two. What this does is create something called familial aggregation, mm -hmm. which in which in which uh, so for example, if your if your if your sister had uh, uh, colitis, you'd be more likely to get Crohn's as well because there's 17 of the S&Ps shared in sharing, between them. Yeah. So basically, pe some people in the family will have Crohn's, some will have colitis, and they will group together. Additionally, an interesting thing about this uh, genetic effect is that uh, uh, Crohn's disease displays what's called genetic anticipation, in which a, a parent who had Crohn's disease. At 50, the child may have it at 30, it, and it gets earlier yeah. every generation. So it's, it's very interesting. Now, all of these SMPs only predict about 20% of the incidence of Crohn's disease. And the reason why is because these SMPs are studies, th these studies are studies of individual single nucleotide polymorphisms by themselves, but they don't act by themselves. Mm -hmm. Genes work on genes. There's gene to gene effects, and then there is also in Crohn's disease an epigenetic effect. So there, there, so there's an epigenetic effect, a genome gene effect, and then an environmental effect. So about the environment, briefly, uh, what we know is that people who move from countries that have less incidence of Crohn's to countries that have more incidence of Crohn's develop more Crohn's disease. Yeah. We also know that it was once thought that certain ethnicities were protected from Crohn's disease, um, like in the U.S. Asians, but Asians are increasingly getting Crohn's disease now as well. Asian in the U.S. In the U.S., mm -hmm. exactly. And, but also we mentioned that in Asia, Crohn's disease is less common as well. Okay. So, but that, that is because of another effect we'll talk about right now, which is, so there are certain lifestyle factors. One of them is the Western diet. Okay. The Western yeah. diet influences, it's been shown that uh, taking the Western diet is correlated to Crohn's disease, as is a sedentary lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is also found a lot in the U.S., as are adverse life events. So if people have stressful life events, they're more likely to develop Crohn's disease as well from the stress. And also, so is air pollution. So we live in Southern California where there's horrible air pollution and this has an impact as well. Now, these are the environmental factors. Let's talk about a little bit about what the hell the disease is exactly. Mm -hmm. So I haven't mentioned. So basically it is, the, your intestines are covered, they have epithelial cells. 
And these cells are protected by a film of mucus. Uh, and a lot of this film of mucus depends on a gene called the MUC1 gene, the mucin1 gene. And actually, people with Crohn's disease have impairments at the mucin1 gene usually. So they have a basically reduced ability to protect the epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. They also have what are called leaky junctions, where the epithelial cells are a little bit opened. Okay. What this causes eventually is the bacteria in the intestines are able to aggravate the intestine and try to get out. And when this happens, your body releases a systemic inflammation, what people would call now a cytokine storm because of the coronavirus. Uh, you get cytokines that come out to try to defend you from this bacteria. As long as the bacteria is trying to get out of there and the mucus lining is not repaired, you can, the disease progression gets worse and worse. Yeah, because you keep being inflamed and then you can defend. Exactly. And the inflammation actually, that your body gets so inflamed that it starts to eat, basically damage the intestines. Yeah, the end result is, an, is, a, is a destroyed gastrointestinal system. It, it is a progressive uh, disease that leads to really severe results in the end. Um, so that's one thing, I, you know, just to mention brief, briefly about the bacteria. So people with Crohn's disease, there are four major groups of bacteria found in the human uh, microbiome. Uh, two of the major groups are found to have less diversity in Crohn's disease. And there are a little bit of studies on the different bacteria. There are, like, for example, one bacteria has been identified as being protective mm -hmm. uh, and reduces, for example, NF-kappa B, kappa B, which affects the inflammation. But not that much is known. I want to be clear to the viewers, because sometimes people ask me about, um, back, about the microbiome. Microbiomes. Everyone likes to talk about the microbiome. Know, it's Nobody knows about the microbiome. It's very trendy. And I would tell you this. You can find some... I have some books here. They're behind me, actually. But I have some books on the microbiome. You can read them and you won't learn much. This is very similar to the studies on genes, but actually less so. We know much more about genes than we know about the microbiome. Far, far, far more. We know very little about the microbiome. And what we know is sort of by chance and on the side, we don't really fully understand it. So when somebody tells you, uh, I'm an expert on the microbiome or you need to do this for your microbiome, they don't really know what they're saying. We do know the microbiome needs to have some diversity. We do know that certain strains of bacteria are helpful. Uh, we do know that the, the bacteria that you have in your microbiome depends on what you eat, depends on how often you eat. It changes during the day. Your microbiome is different in the morning, the population, the species, than at night. It changes through the day, and that's why it's very important to eat in a circadian rhythm and to eat certain you know, foods that are good for your microbiome and promote certain kinds of bacteria. We do know that some genes influence how much bacteria you have, what kinds of bacteria, but we don't know, nobody can come and tell you, uh, you know, when people come and tell you do this for your microbiome, they're just talking, you know, this is rubbish. Mm -hmm. So, but the point is, I wanted to say, they do, Crohn's disease patients have reduced diversity in two of the groups. Okay. And they also have, you know, some of these genes that influence Crohn's disease, they're also tied to, for example, autophagy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and people in Crohn's disease, they show impaired ability to uh, produce autophagy of these bacteria. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's tied to autophagy and also some of these genes are tied to leprosy, which may indicate that some of the Crohn's disease patients are more likely to get uh, affected by bacteria, uh, foreign bacteria that come into their body. Mm -hmm. We know that viruses uh, uh, can increase the likelihood of getting Crohn's disease. Viruses can change your uh, phenotype if you have the right genes in the background to develop Crohn's disease. So uh, this is some background now about how it works. Uh, I just want to mention a couple of more things about that. So. Crohn's disease is, uh, you know, it clusters these genes, they cluster with other inflammatory genes that are related to, for example, th uh, thyroid disease, mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, which is gluten intolerance. So basically, all of these kind of autoimmune infl inflammatory diseases cluster together with Crohn's disease. Okay, and so some, if somebody has diabetes or any other uh, thing, plus the genes, they have highly chance to yeah. get Crohn's disease. Well, not just that, it's that people who have a likelihood to get autoimmune diseases are generally more affected, more likely to get other autoimmune diseases. They all I sort see. of cluster. And then people who have Crohn's disease are more likely to get arthritis, which is an autoimmune mm -hmm. disease, this is shown in a paper. And they're also much more likely to get uh, different kinds of cancers in the gastrointestinal system. So they're more likely to get small intestine cancers, as well as they're more likely to get colorectal cancer, which is so at is the end of Is it because of the gene or is it because of the uh, constant inflammatory state? The constant inflammatory mm -hmm. state. That is directly uh, leading the body to uh, uh, create havoc and all kinds of damages going on in the body. Um, you know, I didn't mention this, but people who have Crohn's disease have elevated... Uh, Actually, let's talk about that. So how do people diagnose Crohn's disease? If you go to a doctor, well, first of all, how would you know if you had it? 
basically you get blood and mucus in the stool. Okay. You get a lot of pain in the area usually, uh, but not everybody has the, the pain. Like I didn't experience much pain mm -hmm. uh, originally in, in that area. Um, but you have uh, odd bowel movements and if you go to a doctor and say, do I have Crohn's disease? The only way they can know is by doing a colonoscopy and taking uh, biopsies out of different parts of your uh, tract, cutting it out, and then going and analyzing it under a microscope to see how the cells are behaving. And then they, what they're really going to do is just say, yeah, you have inflammation in that area. And then they're going to call it Crohn's and they're going to classify it according to which areas are most inflamed. So you can have, some people have colon centric Crohn's disease which is like colitis, except it's not just your colon, but around your colon and your colon. Because Crohn's disease is always more significant than, than colitis. And all, but other people have it focused in other areas, not so much in the colon. Some people have it focused on the rectum. So it can be in very many areas. Now, uh, just another thing is that how we can diagnose this is C-reactive protein. Now, I, I, you, know, you guys know I love to talk about C-reactive protein, but C-reactive protein is elevated in nearly 100% of Crohn's disease patients. Oh, wow. And only about 50% of colitis patients, which is why you, mm -hmm. another way you can see the less, the less severe, uh, severity. They also, they, so they check your C-reactive protein. There are also a couple of proteins that they check in your stool, which, which uh, those two proteins combined with the C-reactive protein are good indicators. You don't really need to go through this whole biopsy thing because if you do, there's not much they can do for you anyway. And this is where we get to now how the treatment. So what they do is this. This is what doctors do, and you're going to see why this is not very helpful. The first thing is if you're experiencing severe pain and stuff like that and you're in an emergency, the acute thing that they're going to do is give you corticosteroids and a TNF alpha blocker, tumor necrosis factor alpha blocker. These will immediately calm that what they would call now cytokine storm or whatever's going on with your body and relieve some of the pain. But chronically what they do is they give immo immunomodulatory drugs. Uh, there are two classes of these drugs. I don't remember the names. I haven't taken them myself. Uh, but I'll include citations for you guys so you can read about it. These drugs modulate the immune system. Now, there is some research that shows that combining these drugs, the immunomodulatory drugs, with TNF-alpha blockers, the blockers of tumor necrosis factor alpha, combined together produ produces much better outcomes in the treatments. However, the problem is this. These drugs, both the immunomodulatory drugs and the TNF-alpha blocker drugs, uh, make you more susceptible to uh, catching like uh, bacteria's uh, infections, foreign infections. Um, just like with the drugs that they would take for a kidney transplant. Yeah, because like, they affect you directly your immune system. So. Ex exactly. So it affects your immune system. And then the other thing it does is these drugs are, for, they're, they're dose dependently tied to cancer development. Oh. So because they actually reduce your immune system, which, uh, which is works hard, like tumor necrosis factor. Think about the word tumor necrosis factor. It is going after tumors. Mm -hmm. If you block that, your body has impaired ability to deal with these cancer, cancer right. things, which is why I've mentioned before that even the drugs used for arthritis, most of them, though not all of them, are also tied to increased cancer rates. So what can they really do for you? Well, in the future, they're working on, cyt on cytokine-specific blockades. They're also working on stem cell research. But there's not much they can do for you. They can just tell you you have Crohn's disease, and then you and then what they're going to try to do. The reason why they want to use these uh, immunomodulatory or uh, TNF alpha blocking drugs is to try to stop this iterative process that I described. What they're really trying to do with these drugs is to break this uh, pattern where the mucus is being, uh, or not, somehow the mucus is is, is malformed and it's mm -hmm. reduced. The bacteria are getting through. They're getting through the epithelial cells. Your body senses this, sends out these cytokines, the, the immune system, mm -hmm. the host defense system, goes to attack this bacteria. In the process, the host defense system is destroying your actual tissue. And then the, the, as the tissue gets destroyed, the bacteria are easier to get out. It's iterative and it ends with the total destruction of the gastrointestinal system. So they're trying to use these drugs to stop this. So it doesn't, it's a positive feedback loop. Mm -hmm. They don't want it to keep going like that. So. That's what they're really trying to do. But it's not a long-term solution if you're really predisposed to it and you're continuing to, to have the stressors that are causing you to develop this uh, system. So that's what I have to say about Crohn's disease. Now he asked about how I cured myself of it. And, and when I say cure, I want to mention Crohn's disease at, in general in people comes and goes. And most people who develop Crohn's disease have it for the rest of their lives. And sometimes they'll be in periods where they're not that inflamed. And then they'll go into really badly inflamed periods as well. Uh, in my case, I do believe that I cured it uh, in the sense that I have never had a reoccurrence of any kind. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, over a year or something like that. 
and uh, I have a feeling that I may not experience it again unless I change my behavior. So just to mention the history of how I got it, um, you know, I always had a little bit of a, uh, you know, I have an overactive immune system in some way. I don't get sick easily. I've never gotten sick easily. Um, I actually, I should go back to the, well, well I'll talk about that in a second. I, I, about, you know, originally I think that maybe I had some slight gastrointestinal issues when I was younger. I never really noticed, um, but I guess there was something. Mm -hmm. About four years or three years ago, I began to have uh, some slight symptoms, but I never really recognized what they were. I, I'm the type of person naturally where I just ignore things and I, I didn't really care. I mean, people, people are sometimes more sensitive than I am. I was not really noticing. I didn't have pain. I just had some dis bowel disturbances and things like that. I didn't really pay attention to it. I guess now that I think about it, I actually had it from since childhood, but I, I really, I wasn't thinking about it. When I started thinking about it is this, when I, I guess when I, when I stopped weightlifting and when I stopped using androgenic uh, hormones, I don't know how this happened exactly, but when I stopped within a couple of months, uh, the whatever condition I had got much worse. And it went from having gastrointestinal disturbances to being in uh, originally a little bit of pain and having complications and then getting in very severe pain and having serious com complications. I had a form of Crohn's disease called fistulizing Crohn's disease, which is uh, very, very dangerous and it can easily cause cancers. So I actually had to have a surgery at some point to, to deal with a complication. But the surgery doesn't affect the actual Crohn's disease. Yeah, and just so you guys know, like Leo has a extreme pain tolerance. Like extreme. And he was in like crazy pain for like what, like eight months? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went to the ER multiple times. Like it was, it was horrifying. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really bad. It was really bad. It, the, the amount of pain, I, I never in my life uh, endured that kind of pain. And I'm not sure that the pain could have gotten worse. And doctor didn't diagnose you right away. Like yeah. it was, it was a long process. So, yeah. because this video will help a lot of people because it's very like doctors. They don't give you solutions. No. And they don't even. They just brought up the problems. Like take this for the pain. Thank you very much. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. They were giving me opiates for the pain, and I had to take eventually opiates because I, I'm scared of taking those uh, Tylenol, those mm -hmm. things at high doses because they have very. Uh, bad effects on the body and and they were they were not working i mean i could take a, uh, i it didn't was, even it was not working i never take painkillers and I, I had no experience with talent i would take it and the pain would not even slightly subside mm -hmm. and it but i have no opiate tolerance so i could take a very small amount of opiates and i reduced the pain but it was horrible i mean basically i had eight eight months or so of being incapacitated i couldn't work i i used to operate a blog i had to stop writing my blog because i couldn't write I, it was, it was really, I'm not, you know, I'm not one to complain, but I, what I'm trying to say is this disease is serious. It was really painful. Not many people talk about how painful it can get. Anyway, the point is, you know, I had the surgery to remove a complication from it because it could turn cancerous, but, um, I didn't have, there's no surgery to deal with Crohn's yeah. disease. With the, with the ulcerative colitis, they remove your colon. With the Crohn's disease, what are they going to remove? Your whole gastrointestinal system, your rectum, everything, whether they're going to remove everything. They can't do that. So, and I was not willing to go on these kind of drugs that uh, suppress the immune system because of, you know, obvious uh, complications. So, you know, at this time I was already, I had been interested in genetics for a long time before that. But at this time I had, I, once I stopped weightlifting and stuff like that, I really got into the serious thing about longevity. While I was suffering with this, but it wasn't, it wasn't tied to it. I was just, it was more tied to ending that weightlifting. When I, I was realizing the damage I did to my body from weightlifting, not connected to the Crohn's, I was like, you know what, as serious as I went into weightlifting, I'm going to go just that serious into longevity because I'm the kind of person I do something very well or I don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. And since I, I took that stuff very seriously, uh, you know, and I use, sometimes I used to eat five pounds of, of meat a day and things like that, I'm going to do it just as serious in the other direction. So I started studying that as much as I could. And as I was studying it, I was applying what I was learning in my daily life. And I believe that this is how the inflammatory response and the the Crohn's disease slowly uh, dissipated and eventually it completely uh, got removed. I don't know which month it was, but uh, at some point the pain stopped. The uh, My C-reactive protein now is around, it's still elevated because this is a disease I have. I mean, my grandmother died of ALS. So it, I have autoimmune diseases in my family, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I should mention that briefly. So after I got the Crohn's disease, I called a relative of mine and I was like, actually I didn't call him, he was asking me, how are you doing? I said, well, I'm not doing too well, I have this condition. 
And I don't like to talk about it, but I had to explain because nobody's seeing me. I'm disappeared, you know? So my relative was like, oh, yes, yeah, well, I, your cousin has this, another cousin has this. Three of the uncles had this. Uh, this uh, uh, apparently, everyone in my family has this, but nobody talks about it because nobody wants to talk about this weird, you know, it's a, it's a gastrointestinal thing. Nobody wants to talk about it. So basically, I never knew, but I, not only, and also, I had already checked my genes. I mean, I knew I had the Crohn's disease mm -hmm. genes, but I didn't know my family are actually getting the disease. So anyway, the point is, this stuff is in my, in, is in my background. So uh, anyway, the point is, I changed my lifestyle and it went away. Uh, I'm, I can't say there's one thing I did that, that did it because I totally changed my lifestyle yeah. in every sense. And she witnessed it. Mm -hmm. I, my life went for 180 in the opposite direction. And that's, you know, that's what I'm interested in. And that's why, you know, I answer some of you guys' questions about, about athletics and stuff. But I'm not even... For me, I have to be 100% on one thing. And since I know I shortened my life with what I did, I know I did. And I, I, you know, I, I read enough and to understand that I did that. And I know I don't have the best longevity genes around. She has some better genes than me. Some of our clients have great genes. I don't have the best genes around, but I'm not going to give up. So I took it as seriously as I can. But there are certain things that I did. I mean, basically, it's my whole lifestyle. But there are certain things that may be particularly relevant. I mean, for example, I, I, I try to... I, my lifestyle is very... Uh, it, re it reduces inflammation in general, mm -hmm. not just from that area. So it's very... Uh, 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 I don't know what the word is, but it reduces inflammation. And also, you know, I, I did some things, actually, I did do this because of Crohn's disease. I have a very complicated uh, probiotic regimen uh, mm -hmm. that is very expensive. In fact, it, it costs me a lot of money every month to pay for these probiotics because I, I buy the most expensive and best probiotic supplements. And I take uh, probably six to eight different ones. And I take them all the time, every day. I never miss it. And this increases that diversity of the flora in the gastrointestinal system. And I'm sure that has some effect directly on the bacteria going yeah. on there. But I'm not sure what, I'm not gonna lie to you guys and say I know exactly why. I mean, I do know of, for example, one bacteria strain that does have an effect against Crohn's disease, but the, nobody knows of anything much to do with that. But I do know that it, I, I'm sure it has an impact. I've never stopped. See, I've never stopped any of the things I did, so I can't be sure which one is doing it. Yeah. I changed everything and it went away. And I, and I don't even have the disturbances I used to have as a kid. Like I don't have that stuff and I don't have obviously the pain and the severe state. So when you say you change your lifestyle, can you explain to them a little bit more like food, exercise, like what exactly did you change? So, so they can have a better idea of like trying, trying things and see what works for them. Yeah, good point. So, um, you know, if you guys watch my videos, you'll know sort of my lifestyle. But, you know, I, to begin, I, I, I meditate. Uh, I have a, um, a value system and a way of thinking that is different than I, I used to have before. Um, I... Uh, I eat completely differently. Mm -hmm. So I eat it in a circadian fashion. I eat a few hours a day. I only eat foods that I, uh, I'm sure they're going to have some positive impact on my body or I'm almost sure from studies. So, so for example, recently we added lentils to our uh, salads mm -hmm. because I was convinced of the power of lentils. Every single thing in my salad or in my meals I'm using as a medicine. I'm not using it as a pleasure. Yeah. I have no hedonistic, we try to make our food as tasty as, as possible, but I'm not, I have no hedonistic aspect to eating. Uh, whereas in the past, actually when I was weightlifting a lot, I, w I was also like that, but I was eating a lot of food that was really horrible for me. One of the foods that, one of the kind of eating, by the way, that caused me the most Crohn's disease symptoms was this thing, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the diet, the elevation diet or uh, something, it's by a bodybuilder. Uh, and powerlifter, who's a very intelligent gentleman. It's a very popular diet where they, that's why I have that rice cooker. Oh, well, I, I used I to, <laughs> I tried that diet. That was really bad for me, actually. Uh, although it made me strong, it causes a huge inflammatory response. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, all of my foods are chosen for their health impacts or for their anti-inflammatory impacts or for their uh, antioxidant impacts and uh, also my, my daily life. So now I uh, currently, the gyms are opening next week, so it'll be exciting, but currently I don't, uh, I don't go to the gym, but normally I go to go to the go to the gym, do a cardiovascular exercise, go climbing, go to the sauna. Uh, sometimes, if I'm fasting, I lift weights a bit. Um, you know, what else do we do? This there's, there's a lot of things. I'll also, this huge supplement, you know, yeah, regimen. Yeah, I was going to say the supplement. Supplement yeah. regimen, the drugs. Although I've been taking metformin for a long time, but there are other drugs that I take. There's just so many things that I do. Basically, my whole life, other than work, my hobby is making myself. Um, improving my, my body you know I had brain damage when I was younger 
several times. So I deal with that and that's why I'm so focused on cognitive enhancement mm -hmm. because I'm trying to, it's not, I don't have any genes for Alzheimer's or dementia or stuff like that, but I, I want my brain to be the best it can be. Yeah. And then other than that, I want to live the healthiest uh, life. And why I want the brain to be the best it can be? Not so I can be the smartest, by the way. I just want to be clear. It's not about being smart. It's about my brain is my soul. So the way my brain functions is how, I, how, how my well-being is. It's not just as an analytical uh, mechanism. It's not a computer only. It's my soul. It's how I feel and all of that. So I want that to be the best. And then I want my, my health uh, to be the best so I can live the longest with Lucy so that I don't die young at 60 or, or 65 and leave her alone or something like that. And also so that I don't uh, deal with crippling illnesses as I get older. Look, I know a bunch of people in their 70s or, or six, even in their 60s or some even in their 50s that are very rich. And they'll sit with each other and say, health is wealth, not money. Yeah, they realize there's nothing I can do now. I, I messed up my body. Mm -hmm. You can go to as many hospitals as you want. I mean, money can get you to live longer. Don't get me wrong. But you live a miserable long life. Yeah. So anyway, this is, my, uh, this is my statement on Crohn's disease. If someone is suffering from it, change your life completely. This is my advice. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time.